Okay guys, it's been a little while here. I'm a little slow on doing things and uh, life has been busy, but where we're going with this video today is back to the FG100 DDS function generator. This is actually my uh, most popular video on uh, YouTube here. And the interesting thing about this is that uh, we got talking about it on here and uh, hold on here, two desktops. And as you can see, uh, published on the 20th of August, 2014, we're now into November, 2015. And uh, there's some comments on here and an individual one day by the name of Tim Savage, we got talking about it. And he decided to undertake the job of uh, creating a new firmware, firmware for it because uh, there's a few shortcomings on this unit. So this function generator, right? It's only like 40 bucks or whatever from China off of eBay. So uh, I'll post all the links on this uh, on my blog and under the video here. So what he did is he started a project. Oh, I should have pulled up his hackaday. Well, I'll do that. I'll post it all anyway. So he actually went through and uh, he documented it. He has a pinout. He did some work on it. So we reverse engineered it. He created this uh, pile of files on GitHub, so we'll make sure that's linked into. So this is all him. Um, I'm just going to kind of show how easy this is to do. And uh, yeah, I'm not taking credit for this software, but I want to get him some uh, recognition since I get so many hits too. So hopefully this will uh, get back to him. So these are the source files that he generated, and you can download the whole thing as a zip. And uh, I did that. So, oh, yeah, so there's my blog where I talked about it. We don't really care about that. So uh, over here, I went and on my desktop, I downloaded the files from GitHub as a zip, and I decompressed them into this folder, right? Not a big deal. So we'll go back over to this screen here, and we'll open this up, and here we are terminal. So right now I'm using Linux Mint and I saved his file on the desktop. And it's F G F G lowercase. And he created a uh, make file in there. So what we're going to do for the hardware here this is just a USB Tiny, and it is used for programming the uh, Atmel chips, which is what he used. So this here has a different Atmel chip in it. He checked the pinout. He made sure it was okay to use an Atmel 328P. What's an Atmel 328P? That is an Arduino. So this is a, a knockoff Arduino. This is a uh, your Arduino, I think. And this is handy because you can plug your ISP USB Tiny into it directly here. So I've, I'm using the uh, programmer here. So this is actually just an Arduino chip. So what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to pretend it's not an Arduino and I'm going to dump the firmware right onto this chip. So you can use this Arduino board to put Tim's new uh, firmware onto a chip for this thing. So this is really handy. So he, he's, um, I don't know if it was really intentional or not, but he made it very easy for you to do this. So here we are on my Linux uh, command prompt here. And in his instructions, he even says down here, the requirements, obviously the FG100 and that Mega 328P microcontroller an AVR programmer, so he's using USB Tiny ISP, that's what I have. And uh, what this is, is this is just the tool chain that uh, you use. So if you're using this programmer to work with an Arduino already, you have this tool chain installed. So simply, um, I've navigated to that folder, and we just say make install. And we're going to hit enter, and there it is. It's writing to it right now. That's why this is right inside. And we're done.
AVR dude, done. Thank you. So I'm going to pause this recording. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to open this puppy up. We're going to drop the 328P in. The uh, microcontroller is stashed beneath the screen, so you have to remove the four screws on the outside to access the microcontroller. So here I've removed the screen. So this is the microcontroller we're going to remove. And this one here is an Atmega 48PA. And uh, actually, as he pointed out, uh, when he was ripping it down, he pointed out the Rubicon caps, and uh, I didn't notice that. But that is a good sign of build quality, uh, assuming they're legit. So, yeah, there's some good parts in there. So, usually firmware, you know, it kind of insinuates that you're just going to, you know, flash the uh, hardware there. But, like I said, we got to pull this chip out and put this one in. And uh, I'm shooting this on my cell phone, so it's going to be hard to show you. Uh, while I'm doing it just because I have to hold it all but I'm gonna gently pry out this 28 pin package I'm gonna drop this one in so this here now I have installed the Atmega 328P chip into here there we go so now you can see it so um, I guess what I should mention though is when I say gently pry it out I'm not really kidding here because uh, if you bend the pins on this original chip, uh, one of the joys of using the 328P is that uh, myself and I'm a, I'd imagine Tim, uh, we have a lot of these laying around because I keep flashing them and reinstalling them and using them for things. Whereas the chip that I took out of here originally, uh, I don't have another one of these. And on top of that, I don't have the original firmware file. So if I pooch this chip, uh, there's no going back. So. Uh, hopefully Tim will get this software going to a point where we're happy with. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, we're going to look at it in a minute. But very gentle. So now I'm going to reinstall the screen. And uh, I do like this pin header idea. I actually borrowed this when I built my gauze meter prototype, which is also in my videos. Check that out. But I'm going to reassemble the uh, function generator now, and we'll take a look. All right, so I apologize. My lab garage is a mess. Here's the generator. I've plugged it into my oscilloscope. And uh, I have it on my frequency counter. And we're about to turn it on for the very first time here. That's a bad start. Oh, that's a super fail. Okay, I was, uh, I was so excited that I didn't plug the power in. Okay. Savage Company, very nice, very nice. Sign 500 hertz. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's do it. Oops, I bumped the power there. Oh, no. How's my output looking here? Not seeing an output. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm a horrible person. Um, so, it does look like it's locking up. He has nothing coming up on the screen. What I discovered was that, um, okay, I have kids. And uh, they come out to the garage and they play with my oscilloscope. The coupling was off. And uh, you'll notice that when it starts up, the, uh, oops, when this thing starts up, it wants to go at 500 hertz. And uh, the way I had my oscilloscope set, um, I was actually looking at like half a megahertz, not 500 hertz. Um, so that's 0.5 kilohertz, right? So right now it's off, and we're going to hit run stop. And uh, right now it's supposed to be running at 500 hertz. Um, so he has nothing on the screen. That's fine. That's fine. This is him trying to figure it out. But there's our sine wave. And uh, I'm actually reading it at about 800 hertz. And there's our waveform. So, uh, yeah, are the features limited? Yes, he's just working this out. But uh, I thought it didn't work at all. It was my bad. So what's going on here is he's generated a sine wave, and uh, he's, uh, the number looks a little bit off, but he's getting there. So, better than I could do.
Sorry, I just went crazy there because I bumped it. My power cord doesn't work well. So yeah, you can't change anything yet. So he's just doing this as proof of uh, concept here. There's my amplitude. That's just moving outside the trigger. He's getting there though. I like it. Yeah, you can see it coming apart there a bit, but... So, basically what we're trying to do, or what Tim is trying to do, is he's trying to give us the ability to eventually, uh... Uh... There we go, I'm changing the offset. That's in the hardware. So basically though, we wanted to make this thing sweep through a bunch of frequencies, and that's uh, what Tim's trying to do. So he's getting there. So, uh, leave it to him. We'll stay in touch, and, uh... Yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll make sure that I update my blog when uh, he has something further along. But this is pretty exciting stuff. It's a lot of work to reverse engineer a piece of firmware. So, all right, Tim, um, from my blog to uh, the world, thank you. And uh, keep on going.